Dear IAS aspirants, discussion about Gramsci normally brings in mind the concepts of domination, hegemony, and organic intellectuals, etc. They are, of course, very important political thoughts given by Gramsci. But today, myself, S.N. Chakravarti, is going to discuss another important uh, aspect of Gramscian thought that is superstructure. Gramsci, born in 1891 in Alice in Italy, was the first Marxist theoretician who interpreted the concept of superstructure differently from the classical Marxism. As you all know, Karl Marx has located class analysis in social environment. The production process begins in social settings by mobilizing four key means of production. Capital, land, raw materials and labor. The person who mobilizes them becomes the owner of the means of production. The owner of the means of production then controls the production process, decides the nature and quantity of production and fixes the wage of labor. The owner sells the final product in the market and enjoys the exclusive right over the profit or to say surplus value of the product. The, at the original social setting, the owner and labor participated in the production process harmoniously based on a very unique social and economic relationship. But with the advent of capitalism, the social component of their relationship slowly disappeared. And their relationship has become absolutely economic in nature. Marx calls it the polarization of classes, the capitalist class and the working class. This is when the capitalist class or ruling class starts developing superstructure step by step. Suitable legal body, political structure, administration and law enforcement agency uh, come up uh, to safeguard their economic and other interest. According to Marx, the state or, or superstructure uh, come up with uh, judiciary, legislature and executive followed by many other subsystems. The market forces and the political system maintain nexus between them on similar class interest but they functionally definitely differ. When contradiction between these two classes gets intensified and reach at a non-negotiable stage, they become absolutely aggressive and violence, violent against each other. Marx saw an opportunity of proletarian revolution in such situation, but Gramsci differed. According to Gramsci, the sphere of superstructure is much bigger than what Marx thought. Along with economic conditions, various socio-cultural aspects also exist in it. Instead of accepting linear relations between base and superstructure, Gramsci found in it a cyclic order of relationship. Several institutional entities with non-economic values and practices also exist in superstructure. Many of them flow in from previous societies like customary practices, religious beliefs, language, art, literature, knowledge system and so on. They evolve over time and form an important component of the superstructure. This is where Gramsci refers to the concepts of domination and hegemony. Unlike Marx, Gramsci argued that a revolutionary process needs to challenge at both you know, these aspects. While political system dominates over the exploited classes by means of coercive means, 
the socio-cultural aspects influence human psyche using soft power. The ruling class used them to manufacture consent for their own needs and interest. It aims to prevent revolutionary formation in society at, at by all means. The ruling class is uses religious scriptures, educational curriculum, music, story, fable, and many other means of soft power to keep their hegemony unaffected. Those who execute these for the capitalist class or the ruling class, like technical experts, religious preachers, academics, musicians, writers, astrologers, doctors, and others, also occupy space in superstructure. Gramsci called them organic intellectuals. This is why Gramsci said that revolution is a multi-pronged struggle against the entire superstructure. It will be held at the factory level as well as at the intellectual level. He suggested two methods for challenging ruling class hegemony, war of maneuver and war of position. The war of maneuver is open and direct conflict between classes applying force. But in the war of position, revolutionary intellectuals take the pivotal role to challenge the hegemonic apparatuses at the civil society level. Critics often allege that Gramsci suffers hugely from Italianness in his thoughts and perspectives. Nico Paulansas argued that as historicist Marxist, Gramsci is also ultimately an idealist. In spite of criticism, one thing can fairly be accepted that Gramsci is one of the first Marxist theoreticians who recognized that culture was never the expression of underlying economic relations alone. Sources of culture are much wider and bigger and varying, and it is also part of superstructure. We will definitely discuss many other you know, thoughts of Gramsci uh, in detail in some other time. Meanwhile, hope this presentation uh, has given you some clarity about uh, Gramsci's concept of superstructure and in which way it differs from Karl Marx. Thank you very much.